Greetings, everybody. Turn your Bibles, your King James Bible, to Ezekiel chapter 38. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I was going to start doing the Old Testament, and then I realized, wow, I missed some stuff in the Old Testament. Uh, this is a kind of an important... Well, everything in the Bible is important. Some things are more relevant, I guess you could say, to our present day. Some things were in the present when the prophets were living. Some things were present when the apostles were living, when Christ was living. Some things were past, and then some things were future. So let's take a look at Ezekiel 38, because I believe that much of that is being fulfilled, or has been fulfilled, today. Verse 1, Ezekiel 38, verse 1. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy fa face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy prophecy against him. Now, who is this Gog and Magog? Well, Genesis chapter 10 and verse 2, we find out that he they are among the sons of Japheth. Gomer, uh, Genesis 10, 2, the sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshech and Tyrus. So they are of Japheth, which is not of Shem, which is of the chosen seed. So keep that in mind. Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog. So Gog is a people, Magog is the land, uh, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth with all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them. All of them with shield and helmet. Now, Ethiopia and Libya were tied in with, uh, with ham. All right, let's take a look at uh, Jeremiah chapter 46. We're just going to skip around a little bit. Verse 7. Who is this that cometh up as a flood, whose waters are moved as the rivers? Egypt rises up like a flood, and his waters are moved like the rivers. And he saith, I will go up and will cover the earth. I will destroy the city and the inhabitants thereof. Come up, ye horses in rage, ye chariots, and let the mighty men come forth, the Ethiopians and the Libyans that handle the shield, and the Lydians that handle and bend the bow. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries. Doesn't sound very good for Ethiopia and Libya there, does it? That he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood, for the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Huh, doesn't sound too good, does it? No, sure doesn't. Uh, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 30. Verse 1. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophecy... And say, thus saith the Lord God, Howl ye, howl, bow, 
Woe worth the day. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord is near, a cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. Ooh, that doesn't sound too good, does it? And the sword shall come upon Egypt. Now, a sword is always representative of war. And the sword shall come upon Egypt. Now, remember, he just talked about the time of the heathen, right? And great pain shall be in Ethiopia. Great pain. When the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundations shall be broken down. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people. Listen to this carefully. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people and Chub and the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Doesn't sound like the Lord likes Egypt, Ethiopia, Libya, or Lydia, or the mingled people. Verse 5. Because they're going to fall by the sword. Verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, They also that uphold Egypt shall fall, and the pride of her power shall come down uh, from the tower of Sy Syene, shall they fall in it by the sword, saith the Lord God. And they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries that are desolate, and her cities shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted. And they shall know that I am the Lord when I have set a fire in Egypt, and when all her helpers, all her helpers shall be destroyed. Oof. In that day shall messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid, and great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt, for lo, it cometh. Uh, verse 10. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the terrible of the nations, shall be brought to destroy the land, and they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. And I will make the rivers dry and sell the land into the hand of the wicked, and I will make the land waste and all that is therein by the hand of strangers. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Oh boy. All right, let's go back to Ezekiel 38. I guess we'll start in verse 4. And I will bring thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands, all his bands. Uh, no, we're not talking about musical groups. No, we're talking about bands of soldiers, right? Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togarmah of the north quarters with all his bands and many people with thee. Be thou prepared and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. For, uh, I'm sorry. After many days, thou shalt be visited. In the latter years. What is the latter years? The end times. In the latter years, thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel which have always which have been always waste but it is brought forth out of the nations and they shall dwell safely all of them thou shalt ascend and come like a storm thou shalt ascend 
and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Now remember, we're kind of talking here about Gog, the people of Gog from the land of Magog, which is of Japheth. Now, if you study the so-called scholars, they will tell you that they're talking about the area around Russia. Well, guess what? Poland, Ukraine, Russia is the area around where they're talking about the land of Magog. Well, who lived in that area? Well, there was a group of people called Chazars, K-H-A-Z-A-R-S, sometimes spelled C-H-A-Z-A-R-S. A group of people that have been almost totally wiped out from history, unless, of course, you are reading the you know who ish uh, encyclopedia. Then you can read the true history. There was a guy named King Bulon, B U L A N. There's probably variations of that spelling. They adopted Judaism. And if you look it up, they were the Yiddish speakers which is an entirely made-up language. It's made up. It, uh, you know, they made it up. It looks like Hebrew, but you, they can't read Hebrew. You can have, hand somebody that speaks Yiddish, knows Yiddish, hand them a copy of the Hebrew Bible. They, I mean, the, the letters look alike, but the words are totally different. And they can't read it. I mean, that's like, handing somebody that knows English, uh, German, you know, the letters might look the same, but they can't read, you know, they might know a few words, but it's totally different. And, and guess what? These Chazars call themselves Ashkenazi. A-S-H-K-A-N-A-Z-I. Yeah, that's right, N-A-Z-I, Nazi. Um, if you look in the Table of Nations, they are of Japheth. And they call themselves Ashkenazi Jews. They're of Japheth. They're not Shem. And the point is, they're from that area of around Russia, Poland, and Ukraine. That was their territory. All these Yiddish-speaking German Jews, guess what? There you go. The people of Gog, of the land of Magog. And who invaded the land? Take a guess. The Ashkenazi Jews are probably, the Yiddish speakers are probably 90% of the population of the Israeli state today. Think about that. But, uh, oof. Verse 9. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud to cover the land, thou and all thy bands, and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind, and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls, and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil, and to take a prey, and to not, not pray to God, P-R-A-Y, but to take a prey, P-R-E-Y, to turn thine hand unto the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of, the, out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Sheba and Dedan uh, and the merchants of Tarshish. Now, Tarshish is supposedly the old name for Spain. 
And the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? Therefore, son of man, prophesy and say unto Gog, Thus saith the Lord God, In that day when my people of Israel dwelleth safely, shalt thou not know it? And it shall come to and, it sh and thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts. Now remember, Russia's north of the land of Israel. And thou shalt come from thy place out of the north parts, thou and many people with thee, all of them riding upon horses, a great company and a mighty army. And thou shalt come up against my people of Israel as a cloud to cover the land. It shall be in the latter days. The latter days, the last days. And it shall be in the latter days, and I will bring thee against my land, that the heathen may know me when I shall be sanctified in thee, O Gog, before their eyes. Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years, that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my fury and in fire my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Boy, I'll tell you what, I could, woof, I could do some, I, I think what we ought to do is, uh, I'll stop here, and they're talking about fury. You know, contrast this with the parable of the wheat and the tares. The gathering of the tares. You know, think about that. And then talking about the fire of his wrath. What does God do to Mystery Babylon? Burns it. They get, they, the, the kings burn her with fire. Because the Lord puts it in their heart to do so. Boy, I could make a whole thing out of just these two verses. In Revelation. In the book of Revelation, which means to reveal. Maybe I'll cover that a little bit. Now, this area of, uh, uh, well, Magog, the land of Magog, the area around Poland and Ukraine and uh, Russia there was always being invaded. I mean, it was the uh, breadbasket of Europe. It's sort of like... You've got, uh, you know, Iowa's all the corn, and then you've got Nebraska, which is uh, all the wheat, where we grow in the United States. Well, that was Ukraine. I mean, it was the breadbasket of Europe. They grew all the wheat there. It would, it, it would feed the, feed the all of Europe just about. And first, the, uh, you know, the Chazars came through. And then every stinking time you had the uh, the Mongols came through. And then every time there was a you had uh, Napoleon came through, and then the Germans, and then the Russians. I mean, their lands were always being invaded by somebody. It, you know, Poland was like right in the middle. Poland and Ukraine were right in the middle of uh, Germany and Russia, and they were always vying for control of this breadbasket. So, a little piece of history here. The uh, Vienna was the capital of Austria, if I remember correctly, and Vienna was uh, surrounded by the Ottoman Turks. Yeah, what they call Turkey, uh, the Muslims, those peace-loving Muslims. Yeah, and uh, they were in danger of collapsing and being overthrown. And Poland, the king of Poland, 
gathered almost his entire army, left his country almost defenseless, and attacked from the rear and the, the, the sides of the Muslim army. And then the Austrians came out when they saw what was going on. And so they were attacked by like basically on three sides where they weren't prepared and defeated them. So uh, Vienna, Austria was saved from uh, being a collapsing in a siege. So, you know, they were, uh, but that part of the world was uh, at least Poland, Russia, and Ukraine were evangelized by the Eastern Orthodox Church, which was from Greece. And then, of course, Rome was the Western Church, Catholic, not Orthodox, but sadly, they were just uh, infiltrated a long, long time ago. All right, let's go to Matthew 13, verse 24. Another parable put he, Jesus, another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, or weeds, and sowed tares among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. Now, if you're interested, I did a at least an hour study on this particular parable. It's really a very powerful story here. It really is. And, of course, they, uh, churches, uh, so-called, spiritualize everything away. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares, or the weeds, also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, an enemy hath done this. Uh, Genesis 6, anybody? The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. Gather ye together first the tares. Will somebody tell the pre-trib rapture people that the tares, the weeds, get gathered first? So if they want to get, uh, if they want to go up first, they can. Me, I want to be left behind. If the tares get gathered first, I want to be left behind. I don't know about you, but... Uh, Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. Let's go to verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and the disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Hey, uh, Jesus, can you explain this to us? We don't get it. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed are the kingdom, uh, are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, 
so shall it be in the end of this world. Hmm. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them that do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So after they get burned, verse 43, all right, then, what is then? Then is after the tares are burned, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Does this tie in with Ezekiel 38? Uh, 18 and 19? And it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury will come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Personally, I think this all ties in with 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, I guess we'll start in verse 8. A lot of people who are into that so-called Hebrew root stuff and the sacred name stuff will tell you that 2 Peter is... Uh, <laughs> they'll tell you it doesn't belong in the Bible. That's what they'll tell you. Well, Peter never wrote 2 Peter. Well, how would they know? They don't know anything. 2 Peter 3 and verse, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. But beloved, be not ignorant. That means you don't know something. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. You know, that's another thing. Sometimes it's, uh, for example, the Bible will say, oh, and this will shortly come to pass. And then they'll say, well, it's been hundreds of years, or it's been thousands of years, and it hasn't happened yet, so it ain't never going to happen. But when you realize shortly coming to pass, uh, you know, like Christ returning, that's only, to the Lord, that's only a couple of days. You know? If you tell your kids, uh, hey, your birthday's coming up, I got a present for you. Uh, you know, it's going to be short, it's going to, you know, your birthday's coming up shortly. You know, a couple days. But to the Lord, you know, to us it's a long time. A couple thousand years, right? But to the Lord, it's a couple of days. So sometimes you have to look at things from the Bible, uh, from the Lord's perspective, and then other times we look at it from our perspective. Knowing the difference, you know, that's, you know, that's where wisdom comes in, I guess. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Ah, there we go. It's going to be burned up. Remember, the tares get burned up first. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Now, I kind of suspect this ties in with it also. 
maybe this is a preview for the, the Big Bang. And oh, by the way, uh, when somebody tells you uh, yeah, about global warming, yeah, remind them about 2 Peter chapter 3. Yeah, yeah, the earth is going to be burned up. Yeah, I believe in global warming. Uh, you know, in the 70s, they were every, uh, especially in the, the late 70s, um, every every week there was like an article on the, the great coming global catastrophe of the ice winter. Uh, the whole world was going into a polar vortex. You know, we were going into another ice age, global cooling. And then it was the, uh, the ozone layer was being depleted and... Um, well, that didn't go over. So now it's, you know, global warming and then it's climate change. And now it's the virus, a virus so deadly that if you got to get a test to know whether or not you have it or not. Yeah. And everybody dying of the virus is in their 70s and 80s. Yeah. Really de deadly. Revelation chapter 18. I think this has something to do with this also. Revelation 18, verse 1, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations, all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And if you think Mystery Babylon is Rome, uh, you'd be partly right. It's one of the sisters, but it's not the mother. Rome is one of the sisters, or daughters, I should say. But it's not the mother. If you're not sure who the mother is, uh, leave me a comment and I'll show you from the Bible. Because guess what? Jesus said that Babylon killed the prophets. Well, John said Babylon killed the prophets. And Jesus said Jerusalem killed the prophets. Do the math. Babylon killed the prophets. Jerusalem killed the prophets. Yeah. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Can you say Kabbalah? And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Remember, people, God's looking for a virgin bride, not a whore. And that's what Jerusalem has become, a whore. Verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, her, uh, which she hath filled, fill to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and live deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. 
2 Peter 3, Ezekiel 38, Wheat Materes. Hmm. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Let's go back to Ezekiel 38, verse 19. For in my jealousy and in the fire, fire, fire of my wrath have I spoken. Surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Now, my opinion is Revelation 16 and verse 17 tie in with the, uh, the sh what we just read. Revelation 16, 17, And the seventh angel poured out his vial in the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven, uh, and there came a great voice out of the temple, the temple of heaven, from the throne, saying, it is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. All right, so there's going to be a major earthquake. Verse 19. And the great city was divided into three parts, it split into three people. That's one. That is one heck of an earthquake. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Boy, that's one heck of an earthquake. All right, back to Ezekiel 38. Verse 19, For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. Yeah, everybody thinks Mystery Babylon is Rome. No. No, people. It's going to be end time Jerusalem. I've got a study on it. I can prove it to you from the mouth of Jesus and the mouth of John um uh, not John the Baptist, but the uh, John the Apostle. You know, Babylon killed the prophets. Jerusalem killed the prophets. When did when did Rome ever get sent prophets to her? Never that she killed. You know, they say New York, the USA, Mecca. I mean, come on, people. Jerusalem. Verse 20, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down. Didn't we just read that in Revelation 18 or 16? Was it 16 or 18? Yeah, 16 and verse 20. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. Why? Ezekiel 20, 38, verse 20. And all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence, and the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fail, uh, shall fall, I'm sorry, shall fall, and every wall shall fall, to the ground and I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains saith the Lord God every man's sword shall be against his brother and I will plead against him with pestilence what's pestilence disease with pestilence and with blood and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones fire and brimstone you know in revelation i'm not going to read it but in revelation it talks about hailstones now well, maybe i will read it that weigh a talent 
which is about 70 pounds. And for those of you that are in Europe, uh, it's about 30, 32 kilograms. Can you imagine being struck on the head by something that weighs 30 kilograms? I mean, even a bowling ball doesn't weigh that much, does it? No. <laughs> no. And yeah, so, you know, fire and brimstone. An overflowing grain, rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. How about a Revelation 11 and verse 19? And the temple of God. Oh, what's a series on? Oh, that's right. The temple of God. And the temple of God was opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. Huh. All right, where's the, is there another thing on hail? Hail, yes. Revelation 16, 21. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. You know, 30 kilograms, 70 pounds. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceedingly great. Back to Ezekiel 38, verse 22. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. All right, let's go to Ezekiel 39. 38 and 39 go together. Verse 1. Therefore thou, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal. And I will cause thee, oh, I'm sorry, and I will turn thee back and leave but the sixth part of thee. A sixth part. Wow, that means uh, about 15%. That's not much. 15% left. That means about 85% die. And I will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. And I will smite, and I will, I will smite thy bow out of thy left hand and will cause thine arrows to fall out of thy right hand. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands and all the people that are with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every sort and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Where do we read this? Well, I think Revelation 19, 19, Revelation 19, 19 uh, fills this category quite well, my opinion. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Huh. Trump's Space Force? Are they, do they, does that, are they creating this uh, Space Force to meet Christ in the air to, to, to a fight him? I think so. Verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And all the fowls, F-O-W-L-S, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. So the vultures got a good meal. And don't kid yourself, eagles will uh, eat Carrion also. Uh, that's a fancy word for roadkill. 
And all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Ezekiel 39, verse 4. Thou, thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and all thy bands, and all the people that is with thee. I will give thee unto the ravenous birds of every, of every sort, and to the beasts of the field to be devoured. Thou shalt fall upon the open field, for I have spoken, it saith the Lord God. And I will send a fire on Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles, and they shall know that I am the Lord. So will I make my holy name known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let them pollute my holy name any more. And the heathen shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One, in Israel. Behold, it is, it is come and it is done, saith the Lord God. This is the day whereof I have spoken. What day? Probably the day of the Lord, right? And they that dwell in the cities of Israel shall go forth and shall set on fire and burn the weapons, both the shields and the bucklers, the bows and the arrows and the hand staves and the spears, and they shall burn them with fire seven years. So that they shall take no wood out of the field, neither cut down any out of the forest, for they shall burn the weapons with fire, and they shall spoil those that spoil them, and rob those that rob them, saith the Lord God. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will give unto Gog a place there of graves, graves in Israel, in the valley of the passengers on the east of the sea, and it shall stop the noses of the passengers, and there shall they bury Gog and all his multitude, and they shall call it the valley of Hammon Gog. And seven months shall the house of Israel be bearing of them, that they may cleanse the land. Can you imagine burying people for seven months? Wow. 13. Yea, all the people of the land shall bury them, and it shall be to them a, a renown the day that I shall be glorified, saith, saith the Lord God. And they shall sever out men of continual employment passing through the land to bury with the passengers those that remain upon the face of the earth to cleanse it. After the end of seven months, shall they search. And the passengers that pass through the land, when any seeth a man's bone, then shall he set up a sign by it till the barriers, the barriers have buried it in the valley of Haman Gog. All right, Haman Gog, uh, according to um, Easton's Bible Dictionary, it's just uh, the name of a valley in which they bury the slaughtered. And then Hamanah, uh, in the next ch uh, verse, uh, just refers to what they call a city of the burying of, the, of these dead. So I've already looked it up. So, verse 16, all, uh, And also the name of the city shall be Hamanah, thus shall they cleanse the land. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, Speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field. Assemble yourselves and come. Gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice that I do sacrifice for you, even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. And ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Wow. All right, Ezekiel 39.20. Uh, all right, so remember in 
Revelation 19 and verse 22, it said, All the fowls shall be filled with their flesh. Well, all right, Ezekiel 39, 19. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord God. And I will set my glory among the heathen, and all the heathen shall see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid upon them. So the house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day and forward. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Oh yeah. The house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity because they trespassed against me. Therefore hid I my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. So fell they all by the sword. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions have I done unto them and hid my face from them. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob. I remember Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Now will I bring again the captivity of Jacob and have mercy and have mercy upon the whole house of Israel and will be jealous for my holy name. After that they have borne their shame and all their trespasses whereby they have trespassed against me when they dwelt safely in their land and none made them afraid. When I have brought them again from the people and gathered them out of their enemies' lands and am sanctified in them in the sight of many nations, then shall they know that I am the Lord their God which caused them to be led into captivity among the heathen. But I have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. You see, the Lord himself is going to gather Israel to the land. Not the United Nations in 1948, that satanic, godless, uh, heathen organization and by the way there's a the united nations uh one of their official publishers is called lucis trust or lucis publishing l-u-c-i-s used to be called lucifer's trust look it up i'm not making this stuff up you know but i have but i have gathered them unto their own land and have left none of them any more there. Neither will I hide my face any more from them, but I have poured out my spirit upon the house of Israel, saith the Lord God. All right. Uh, the Lord says he's going to pour out his spirit. How about Joel 2.28? And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Which means I'm going to be dreaming dreams. Acts 2, 17. And it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. All right, everybody, I guess that's the end of this particular Bible study. Uh, I was going to go do the New Testament, but I, I, I forgot a couple things here. Um, there's a, There was the first temple in Solomon's day, and then there was another temple in Ezra and Nehemiah's day, and that temple lasted until Christ, then it was destroyed. And then there's a temple in heaven. And then there's Ezekiel's temple, which is uh, seems to me it's going to be during the thousand-year uh, millennial reign of Christ, which is only the, the th first thousand years. It's only an introduction. And then there'll be a time when there is no temple at all. So 
keep that in in mind. Uh, God, the Father, and the Son will will be the temple, and of course, His children that are, you know, when God, the Lord pours out His Spirit upon all flesh, well, all flesh that's left, you know, the wheat, not the tares. It just it saddens me that uh, how messed up the uh, the Bible world is. You know, not that I've got all the truth figured out. When I get everything figured out, I'll let you know. But uh, until then, <laughs> that's a that's sarcasm and a joke, people. Yeah, it's it's just amazing that uh, people think the Antichrist or God's chosen people, and then they think the Christians are just these heathens that got grafted into this Antichrist tree. I, I can't figure it out. So, Lord had to almost kill me to get my attention. Let me tell you what. He did. Yeah. It almost killed me. But he had other plans for me. So, and he's probably got a plan for each one of you too. So, it is a good idea. Find out your spiritual gift and use it. That's what I can tell you, you know. So, all right. Well, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.